Hey, let's talk about graphing. This is a visual way to represent a relationship between two quantities, which I realize sounds pretty complicated, so we're going to talk about some examples and where you might see these. So probably the, the most common way that you're going to see graphs is if you follow the stock market. This one in particular shows Google's stock price. Now I say graphing is a way to represent a relationship between two quantities. So what are these two quantities? Well, we're measuring the price per share of Google at different dates. So those are the two quantities, the price and the times. And this visual shows how those are represented. Now let's figure out how to read this graph. So if I wanted to know what Google's stock price was on August 19th, 2011, I would find the time on the time axis, which represents August 19th, 2011. And maybe that's a little hard for you to see. But once you find that, you go straight up to the graph. And then to find the stock price, you follow that straight over to the price. And we find that it's about $250 per share on August 19th, 2011. Now here's the relationship between two quantities. y is equal to the cube root of x. Now this isn't quite as complicated as the graph of Google's stock price, but how do we even see this? We want to visualize this relationship. Here's the best way to do it. We're going to try to make a table, and what I mean by a table is we're going to select some x values, some numbers for x, to plug in to this relationship and see what spits out as y. So if I plug in 0 for x into the relationship, the cube root of 0 is 0, so that means that y is equal to 0. This pair creates a point, 0 comma 0, which you can plot on the graph, and I did right there. I made a point at the origin. Let's try this again with maybe x is equal to 1. The cube root of 1 is also 1, so this creates the point 1, 1 on our graph. Let's try 2. See what happens. Hmm, the cube root of 2 is not a nice integer number. So you could use a calculator and kind of estimate where that point would be on the graph, but let's just try another one. Let's try 3. Cube root of 3? Oh, I don't know what that one is either. So let's keep trying. How about 4? Hmm, 5, 6, 7, all of these have nasty cube roots. You can check them on the calculator. They're not integers. But we get a little break if we try 8, because the cube root of 8 is 2. So that means the point 8, 2 is on our graph, and I drew that over to the right. So I'm just going to rewrite these numbers. And let's try some other numbers for x. We have negative numbers. Let's try negative 1. Cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. Boom, there's a point on our graph. And instead of going through all the trouble of trying negative 2, negative 3, we tried 8, and 8 worked for x, so let's try negative 8. Yep, cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. There's another point on our graph. It's looking good. Now all we have to do is connect these dots to see what the relationship is actually going to look like. And there it is. That's the relationship y is equal to the cube root of x. Now you might notice these numbers look a little symmetric, don't they? When you plug in a number for x, say 8, you can also plug in the negative number for x and it spits out the negative y value. This has a special name. It's actually called origin symmetry. And the way you can see this from the graph is if you rotate it 180 degrees around the origin, if it lands on itself, meaning you get back the exact same graph, that's origin symmetry. Now I want you to try to analyze the relationship y is equal to the absolute value of x. Try to come up with a visual representation of this. So I would make a table, pick some numbers for x, plug them into the relationship, and see what the corresponding number is for y. That will make a point that you can plot on your grid. 
Take a look if there's any symmetry and see if you can describe the symmetry.